A judge in Tunisia has ordered opposition leader Rashid Ghannoushi to be imprisoned for allegedly plotting against state security. That's according to his lawyer. Ghannoushi leads the biggest opposition party, Al-Nahda, and is a critic of President Qais Saeed. He was arrested on Sunday. President Saeed is accused of orchestrating a power grab after he suspended parliament in 2021. Well, in a message recorded before his arrest, Rashid Ghannoushi accused the government of misusing the judiciary to target political opponents. The battle in our country is between democracy and the dictatorship that wants to confiscate all the gains of our blessed revolution. The legal cases against us are empty and meaningless, according to legal experts. The problem in our country is not with me, the unions or other parties. The problem in Tunisia lies with the dictatorship and this brutal coup that is pushing the country towards more calamities and famines. Let's take a look at what's behind the political instability in Tunisia over the past two years. In July 2021, President Kais Saeed sacked the Prime Minister, froze Parliament and assumed executive powers. The opposition said it was a coup. Last July saw just 30% of voters turn out in a referendum that backed Saeed's new constitution. Only 10% of Tunisians voted in parliamentary elections in December and January. And since early February, the government has arrested more than 20 political opponents and public figures who've criticized the president. Amin Sunusi is a political analyst and independent journalist. He joins us from Paris. Good to have you with us. So first of all, what do you make of the charges now being leveled against Rashid Ghandoushi? Well, the charges used against Rashid al-Ghannoushi are the same ones that have been used against Ghazi Shawishi, against Shayma Isa, against Abdullah Mjilasi. Those are charges that are used against anyone who is critical of Qais Saeed. Qais Saeed is, is actually uh, just doing what he's been doing since February and since 2019, always finding uh, ways, political ways, and using the police and the state to arrest his opponents and to intimidate them. Because the message is stronger than arresting Rashid al -Ranushi. The message that the government and Qais Saeed is sending, that anyone who is critical risks to be accused, is at risk of being accused of plotting against the state. Let, let me present to you the narrative of the president and those who support him. They say the political class, particularly in parliament, they're corrupt. They were running the country into the ground. And the particular accusation that was made against Rashid Ghannoushi when shortly after he was arrested had to do with a speech in which they, the officials came out and said he was inciting violence. Well, first, the, 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 accusation, the accusations of corruptions are meaningless because Said has full powers since in the last two years. And did he manage to get rid of corruption? No. Did he manage to get rid of economical crisis? No. So the problem is, is, not, is not the parliament or is not the, the previous constitution and the separation of powers. The problem are deeply rooted inside Tunisia's economy. Said is just using corruption to attack his opponents. The charges against Ranushi comes from a sentence where he said any attempt to eliminate any political idea in Tunisia will lead to civil war. And that statement is, is, is just a political anal analysis. And that statement is just someone who is trying to say that, that, that Qais Saeed is trying to eliminate political ideologies in Tunisia. So really, the, the, statement, um, the statement that Ranushi made is a statement you hear uh, in every political party in Europe or in the US. And you can hear the, those type of statements everywhere. Said just finally managed to to get something on Rashid al ranoushi just like he used to do with his or his, with his his other political opponents. The the idea is arrest first and then find the charges. Do you think we'll see Nahda actually banned? And what will that mean? It's the largest opposition party. Well, it's technically banned. Really, they they. They, they don't have the right to organize meetings at that time. They can't access their headquarters. So really, uh, you don't need to ban them because you, you just strip them for every political right they have. 
So um, really, um, it's 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 the largest opposition group. But but, but side managed successfully to convince people that Nada is the sole responsible for the economical and democratic crisis in the last ten years. While, while Nada was never governing alone, um, there was a structural and difficult di difficult economical problems to resolve. Um, but side managed to to convince the people that uh, that that the old system um, is responsible for uh, for the crisis and that he's the only solution left but once people once when people will realize that this the side is not able to deliver because in the last two years he had full powers and he didn't bring any solution to the table um, once the people will realize that he's not able to deliver we will need to convince again, we will need to talk again about the importance of separation of power, the importance of a parliamentarian system, in order to avoid um, another populistic and authoritarian figure. All right. Thank you so much for your analysis. I mean, Sunusi.